Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. And check out my Patreon where I have three Universally Mini podcasts up, a fourth coming out right after this video, where I am talking about news out of Universal, horror news from the classic film world, and more creature content that didn't make this video. It's an awesome way to support my work, plus it's like a really great podcast actually. And I just did a bonus bonus episode about the mysterious death of Thomas Inns. So go right now, patreon.com slash Antonia Carlotta. Today's video is not from the Lemley era, but you guys have requested it over and over, and I feel like I should finally tie a bow on the Universal Monsters. And that's not to say that I'm not making any more content on the Universal Monsters, so far from it. It just means that after this video, I'm pretty sure that I will have made at least one video on every major Universal Monster. And I guess it only took till like my 95th video to get there. I always profess my undying love for Dracula and Frankenstein, but there's something about Creature from the Black Lagoon that just makes me so happy when I watch. I love the aesthetics. I think it's such good horror. It's, it's a great movie. I don't even care that it's not from the Lemley era because good is good. It hasn't had a traditional remake yet like some of the other major monsters, but I would be really curious to see what a good modern filmmaker could do with it. Like not a cheesy action flick, but a real good horror remake. Anyway, enough of the introduction. Today's video is about Creature from the Black Lagoon. Creature from the Black Lagoon is a 1954 horror film directed by Jack Arnold. In the film, a group of scientists travel through the Amazon searching for an evolutionary missing link between sea and land creatures and encounter a terrifying sea monster. The film stars Richard Carlson, Julie Adams, Richard Denning, Antonio Moreno, and Nestor Paiva. The creature from Creature from the Black Lagoon can be referred to as the creature or the gill man. Ben Chapman played the gill man on land and Rico Browning played the Gale Man underwater. I love the origin story of Creature from the Black Lagoon. Back in late 1941, early 1942, producer William Allen was at a dinner party with Orson Welles, Dolores Del Rio, and Mexican cinematographer Gabriel Figueroa. Figueroa shared a story with them about these half fish, half human creatures in the Amazon River that once a year would come take a woman from a nearby village. Allen held on to this inspiration and he used it about 10 years later when he combined it with Beauty and the Beast and wrote notes for a story called The Sea Monster. In December of 1952, writer Maurice Zim would create a treatment based off of this idea and then Harry Essex and Arthur Ross would write the actual script, which they just titled The Black Lagoon. Three-dimensional films were all the craze in the 1950s, starting with the film Buona Devil and then really taking off with House of Wax. With more and more Americans getting TVs in their homes, theater attendance was dropping dramatically and studios were looking for another tactic to get audiences back in those seats. 3D technology was just the thing, and horror and sci-fi were two of the best genres to showcase it. It was decided that Creature from the Black Lagoon would be shot in 3D. As I mentioned before, there were two actors hired to play the Gill Man, Ben Chapman on land and Rico Browning in the sea. Ben Chapman was hired pretty much the traditional way. He was a contract player at Universal, and the filmmakers really liked that he was six foot five. Rico Browning, on the other hand, was a part-time lifeguard in Wakulla Springs, Florida, where some of the crew went location scouting. He agreed to swim for some test shots, and a few weeks later got a call that they liked the way he swam and they wanted to hire him. Rico would use this opportunity to start his career in Hollywood. One of my favorite and least favorite stories from Creature from the Black Lagoon is the story of Millicent Patrick. And I really recommend reading the book, Lady from the Black Lagoon, which I've got linked in the video description below. Millicent Patrick was an animator who worked for Disney in the 1930s and 1940s. In the late 1940s, she met Bud Westmore, the head of the Universal Studios makeup department, and she became the first woman to work in the special effects department. She designed the Gilman costume for Creature from the Black Lagoon, and at the time, she got a ton of publicity for her work. 
She went on a promotional tour called The Beauty Who Created the Beast to talk about her work, but Bud Westmore got jealous of her popularity. He changed the name of her tour to The Beauty Who Lives with the Beast so he could deny her credit of her work. And then when she returned from the tour, he fired her. Millicent Patrick's contributions were largely erased by Westmore for years, and I'm really grateful to Mallory O'Meara for putting Millicent Patrick back on the map. Since two different actors of two very different sizes played the Gill Man, two different costumes had to be made, including two different masks made from molds of the actors' heads. The costume was made out of a foam rubber and cost upwards of $15,000. For Ben Chapman's costume, he would put on a body stocking and rubber scales would be glued onto him. Chapman couldn't sit down in the costume and he could hardly see out of the super narrow eyes in the mask, so it was pretty miserable for him in costume. Rico Browning had it a little easier in his suit, but he also had to swim underwater for minutes at a time and also with minimal visibility, so not so easy after all. He couldn't have found it too terrible though, because Rico Browning played the Gill Man in all three Creature from the Black Lagoon films. Our female lead is Julie Adams, credited in the movie as Julia Adams. She was a contract player at Universal and honestly not too happy to get this role. She kind of thought that she was above it, but she didn't want to get in trouble for turning down the role, so she said yes and figured she'd make the most of it. And that was a good decision. I am so happy to report, unlike so many other actresses that I report on in old films, that Julie Adams actually had a great experience working on Creature from the Black Lagoon. She got along well with her director and her co-stars, and they loved to joke around with each other on set. I can't not point out one of the most famous stories from Julie Adams' time on set. She did have one mishap. So remember before I mentioned that Ben Chapman's costume had very narrow slits for eyes and it was hard for him to see out of. In one scene, when he was carrying Julie Adams through the cave, he couldn't see and he hit her head against the wall and she started bleeding. And of course it was a day when PR was there taking photos, so they caught the whole thing and the story gained quite a bit of notoriety. Julie Adams assured everybody though that it wasn't nearly as bad as they made it sound. I love that Julie Adams' character is a scientist and that her intelligence or her right to be there is never really questioned. But I don't want you thinking that her character is like the feminist dream or anything either because once the movie gets going, her character kind of just does a lot of screaming and falling and her big storyline is mostly just falling in love. The last thing I'll point out from the film itself is the music. Three different composers worked on this film, focusing on three different types of scenes. Henry Mancini composed the music for when things were nice and calm on the lagoon. Hans J. Salter composed some of the darker, more dramatic elements of the score. And Hermann Stein, in addition to doing the opening and closing credits, wrote the music that plays every time you see the Gill Man. Like, every time you see the Gill Man. And by the end, it's kind of a lot. When the movie premiered on February 12th, 1954, it became one of the most successful 3D films and one of the top grossing horror films of the 1950s. It spawned two sequels, Revenge of the Creature and The Creature Walks Among Us. From a legacy standpoint, it's so interesting because I don't always hear Creature from the Black Lagoon listed as an influential film, but there's no doubt that it's an influential film. Every time I watch Jaws, I am blown away by how much inspiration Steven Spielberg took from Creature from the Black Lagoon. And let me give a shout out to Creature's underwater filming because it's so good. They do such a good job of building the tension and really playing into those fears of what lies beneath the surface. I've heard that Alien and Predator also took inspiration from Creature. And of course, more recently, Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water, which is like if the Creature and Julie Adams' character really did fall in love. I, for one, could watch Creature from the Black Lagoon over and over again. I think it's so fun, it's such a good movie, and I don't care that it's not part of the Lemley Universal era. I am really proud to have it as part of the Universal Monster canon. Make sure you head over to my Patreon 
to get my Universally Mini podcast with more about the creature that didn't make this video, plus horror news, universal news, classic film news, and more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.